Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk about some of the differences between Tor Browser versus CyberGhost VPN to kind of give you some indication about which you might want to use uh, for your privacy purposes. So Tor Browser is different than a VPN in that it is simply a web browser you download onto your computer that has extra security features built in. So whenever you are using the Tor browser, which you can see right here, it looks pretty similar to something like Firefox or Chrome, you actually connect through to the uh, to all, access all of these websites by accessing a Tor circuit, which will by default automatically be generated as you launch the browser. So in this case, my internet connection, um, and when I'm loading these web pages, it's actually bouncing between this browser to France, to the United Kingdom, to France, and then to the internet. So this makes it harder for um, governments and companies to basically uh, get access to all of your private data and to see what you're doing on the web online as you do searches, um, go to different sites, whatever you have going on online. And that's all well and good. Um, but the problem is with Tor specifically, that uh, accessing it through these different servers, which are basically voluntarily kind of put up uh, for the circuit, you could say like donated in a way, um, is that accessing the internet through Tor ends up being quite slow. Uh, now they say basically um, more, the more that they can get donations, the faster that they'd be able to keep the speed up, but I have never really had great success getting good speeds on Tor. Um, so what that kind of means with Tor is that you're kind of restricted to visiting sites uh, with about as much privacy as you can get, but at a cost. And that cost is speed. That cost is not being able to access many of the scripts that certain sites run. So uh, there might be some JavaScript that sites normally run. And um, it, by, in Tor, by default, they are disabled. You can re-enable them. Uh, but some of those scripts, uh, particularly ones that collect data, like uh, Google Analytics, I imagine, um, they are forbid, uh, forbidden so that you're not having your data collected as part of the whole privacy thing. Um, so th that might mean, though, that you have reduced features as you try to access websites. Now, um, I, I think at one point you weren't able to watch videos, uh, but it is technically possible to watch videos on like YouTube or vid.me now with Tor. Uh, the problem is, once again, it's really slow, so um, I, I don't know, it's going to put kind of, some kind of stress on the servers, and uh, mm -hmm. probably it would be hard to stream at a quality more than like 240p or 360p, but it, it is possible. Um, and one difference as we get more into the CyberGhost part of this video is that uh, the Tor circuits are kind of automatically selected, at least by default. Um, you can go for a new identity, a new uh, Tor circuit, and refresh that, uh, but it's kind of all generated for you, which is nice in a way. You don't really have to mess with it if you're browsing through Tor and uh, you're following their warnings here on uh, torproject.org, um, you should be pretty fine getting about as much security as you can uh, with normal browsing habits. Um, now, one thing to mention is that you should not torrent over Tor. It's not recommended. Um, as, uh, well, you can basically read right there for yourself. Uh, so you wouldn't use Tor to torrent. So we go over to CyberGhost. Oh, oh, and by the way, uh, Tor, of course, as your IP address is shown up to the Internet, it's going to be a different IP than what your real IP is. So you can see here, anonymous proxy, and even though that's behind, like, Tor behind a VPN, Tor gets its own uh, IP address because it's basically the browser. Everything's going through the browser. Um, and over here on CyberGhost, um, CyberGhost is a VPN, a virtual private network, which is basically where you connect into the CyberGhost servers. So in some ways, it's very similar to Tor, where you have these servers serving as a buffer, preventing um, basically companies, governments, whoever may normally have access to your IP address and the information associated with that. They basically get stopped at these walls, the servers of CyberGhost. Um, so behind CyberGhost, you're in this private network, hence VPN, uh, where um, kind of what you do is more private. It's encrypted. Behind the connection, 
uh, what outside sources are going to see basically stops at the server. Um, so right here we have, I would presume, the IP address of one of those servers that's actually in Los Angeles in the United States. And I'm accessing everything through that. So on the outside, what they're seeing is the Los Angeles server. But on the inside, I know, of course, that, you know, I'm in a different location in the world. Um, so uh, it's not like completely foolproof. Of course, like if you're submitting form data or logging into a website, uh, of course, like YouTube is still going to know that you logged in as Chris Tutorials or whoever you happen to be. You can't hide that. Um, but you can basically hide where you are actually located and what computer you're using. Um, so this also has applications beyond a web browser, which is really uh, the, the part that's really different about CyberGhost rather than just a uh, browser, is that it's blocking, it, well, it's hiding your IP address for your entire computer. So if you use a service like Spotify, um, which is a music player, then... Spotify is going to see your IP address as whatever country the server is, and that means you can get around some of the restrictions uh, that are region locking things. Um, now, how far you want to go with that, it does sometimes go against terms of service, but uh, I, I suppose you could use it for game registration or that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me think here. What else do we got? I have kind of a list I wrote up here. So, um, presumably with CyberGhost, it's one hop to the server. Um, never seen anything about, like, taking multiple hops to get to the server, and that might be one of the reasons that CyberGhost would be a lot faster, especially with the premium version. Because you have these premium servers that are purely dedicated to servicing VPN clients, and so they can transmit a lot of data to you um, at basically the speeds that you would expect through just a straight-to-the- ISP and internet um, kind of service, basically straight to the internet provider, and that's it. Um, so yeah, faster service there, which is a big deal. I mean, especially if you want to load videos, do downloads, anything like that, it really goes a long way to actually be able to access your services properly. Um, now, there is a waiting queue on the free version of CyberGhost, uh, so it's kind of a freemium service. If you're not paying anything, you have to wait in a queue and you only have access to the free servers. But um, when I was using the free version, I had pretty decent results there. It's just a little annoying to have to wait a couple minutes for the queue. Weirdly, though, for the uh, mobile app version, which they, they of course, have uh, iOS and Android, um, they didn't have a waiting queue. But I think you couldn't pick your server. Uh, and you can use CyberGhost on PC, Mac, Linux, uh, Tor. Actually, I think Tor, Tor does have a mobile app now, so definitely Android, probably iOS, uh, Android, Mac, and Windows. So basically all the operating systems are covered for both. Uh, you can, of course, torrent at high speeds, downloads in general, watch YouTube videos. Um, and uh, there's manual selection of servers or automatic selection of servers. So I think when I went here for this surf anonymous, uh, anonymously section... It was uh, automatically selected, but uh, we can just go ahead and hit back here, and uh, I'll show you this. This is something called Choose My Server, which I believe is premium only, but you can basically select any server you want. So um, if you want to be in Israel, I guess most of the countries are Western countries here. Um, but yeah, like Poland, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, uh, a lot of good choices in the world. Um, then you can just go ahead, pick one of their servers out, and it will let you know if torrenting is supported, what your ping to the server is, and you can mark them as a favorite over there. Um, probably you want to access the ones that have the lowest pings for you. Uh, so yeah, that those pings aren't exactly great. And uh, I would point out, though, if you are trying to game behind a VPN, uh, having a ping of like 350 is going to hurt you. So do keep that in mind. Um, if that's something you are planning on trying. But uh, maybe you'll be able to find some servers that are closer to you. Especially with CyberGhost, I imagine, if you're in the UK, you're going to get a lot faster pings. So uh, that pretty much sums up a lot of the major differences between the Tor browser and CyberGhost VPN. Uh, a virtual private network kind of covers your whole computer, while the Tor browser is focused on just, you access the browser, you want to browse some websites, 
everything that Tor does is only within that browser. It's not going to secure everything on your computer. You still have a public facing IP address for everything else that's going on in your computer, like the Windows 10 services, but just for the data that's going through that browser, such as accessing a website, uh, should be privatized. And as long as you uh, kind of follow the rules here, I should say strongly suggested guidelines, uh, then you should be okay and get some extra security. So I hope this has been a useful video for you guys in uh, understanding Tor and understanding CyberGhost VPN as well as other VPNs out there. Uh, I'll put a link to both in the comment, or the description down below. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future video content.